Hi everyone, welcome back to Chandan Logics. In this session, we will be going to discuss May 14th current affairs. At the end of our session, even we will be going to do practice session that were the questions based on our previous past one week current affairs and as well as including general studies concepts too, we will be going to cover under practice session. First, we will be going to do the descriptor session that means here we will be going to discuss all the concepts regarding May 14th current affairs. Yes, now before going to start the session, try to share this live video and live interactive session with your friends that they can also get benefited. That means here these live interactive sessions were conducting. The major objective for these live sessions is just to interact with you people. Whatever the doubts you have regarding current office, you can clarify them in the session itself. So that with that main objective, we were coming with a live interaction with you people too. And then, next if we can move to the concept regarding all about the information called current affair PDFs. Many of you were mentioned regarding how to download the current affair PDFs. Are you providing soft copies of current affair PDFs or like that maybe I have received many of our comments from past many days. So just here a simple solution. If you people have didn't have any idea how to download the PDFs just here I will be going to inform you. First you people have to go through the description ok. In that description there will be a link ok. So just click on the link and join through our telegram channel. So in that telegram group daily we will be uploading daily current affair PDFs or else if you are not working with that particular link. And the second way is that just open telegram app in your mobile phone or else laptops etc. Then there in the search bar just type Chandan Logics ok. So then you will be appearing one channel and the one group called Chandan Logics. So in that group you can join through it and you can get access of daily current affair PDFs. And the other telegram channel is Chandan Logics Telugu. These were the two telegram channels. Are you getting my point everyone? And then regarding Telugu current affairs. Even Every day in the session I am always announcing about Telugu current affairs but even though I am receiving the comments so based on Telugu current affairs just you people go through the Chandan Logics Telugu YouTube channel there will be uploading Telugu current affairs. Are you clear? And also we have done with the past 5 months of current affairs on monthly basis particularly based on Telangana regional current affairs. Yes and then. Next, now if we can start with the session with the national and the state news, I am going to start with the May 14th current affairs descriptor session. At the end, I am going to discuss practice questions. Are you clear everyone? And before going to start the session, let me look how many of you have joined regarding the live interactive sessions. Yes, Jayaka, good afternoon. Pavan Kumar, good afternoon. Okay, Mokshita, Swati, Yadkiri, Prashant, Divya. Shiva, okay everyone good afternoon and hi welcome to this particular live interactive session and try to share with all your friends so that they can also get benefited and they can rise their doubt session itself. What are the doubts you will be having just in the middle of the session also you can mention the comment section. Yes Priya good afternoon. And even if you want to download the free PDFs, just you can go through our telegram channel. There will be uploading that is regarding the current affair PDFs on daily basis too. And don't forget to click the like button. Now let me begin with the session here all about the descriptive concepts. The first comes to here regarding the Kerala and the South India which is facing the outbreak of tomato flu. Are you getting my point here clearly? What is that outbreak here? Tomato flu. Previously already India and worldwide which is facing with the outbreak called COVID-19 pandemic. So after this COVID-19 virus and the pandemic now the other one and recently which has actually affected the state of Kerala too. And let us discuss about this tomato flu. What is this flu actually all about? So it is in current affair about tomato flu. The southern parts of India were facing this particular issue. And the few parts of Kerala a new virus 
are you clear the new virus which is known as tomato flu which has been detected after covid-19 pandemic even including almost 80 children in kollam city of kerala have been diagnosed with the tomato flu and it is spreading rapidly even more than 80 children also hospitalized so based on this new virus called tomato flu everyone be safe and stay safe and stay home and try to hand hygiene use hand hygiene and all the health issues even don't been neglected that already like you people were in a situation like covid pandemic has been ended but no even other new virus were also detecting in this even you can consider here particularly in south india so even as we people were regarding to india right so whatever the virus were acquiring an outbreak was affecting india so whenever these type of situations first health is wealth right so just be careful everyone and stay safe and particularly here is a new virus called tomato flu and tomato flu actually recently it was like first been detected in the state of kerala nearly 80 children has been affected this new virus called tomato flu why actually the name has been given like tomato flu for this new virus means even you can consider here there will be actually recognized as a tomato flu because it causes the tomato shaped blisters on the body as you can know that like small small blisters will be forming on the body and in the hands or face of a human body so particularly in the state of kerala that is in kollam city nearly 80 children has affected with this tomato flu and in your nearby surroundings children just keep them safe and you people also be safe right and then next you can consider here regarding the disease and the new virus called all that cases that are confirmed have been diagnosed in the children below the age group of 5 years and also they have admitted to all the local government hospitals to based on this the new virus called tomato flu so this is a new virus just to take a note on this particular part and majorly it is affecting the southern part of india and also whenever will be coming some of the new virus etc you need to know about the symptoms right so here the symptoms you can consider is the children were experiencing fever rashes and skin irritation so these were the symptoms of tomato flu and also some children even suffering from the dehydration also as we people well know that the summer season right so just take a water content and make your body hydrated right and even then that means not only always focusing on studies but you have to take care of your health too everyone be safe and take more water content in your body and also in your surroundings or in your family if there were the kids just look up, look over them in a safer way because these are some of the new viruses also re- recently has been detected in southern part of india so just to be care everyone and even the increasing effect of tomato flu in kollam and the neighboring districts like mangaluru udipi kodagu and chamagam and even mysuru so these are on the high alert and are directed to keep on the eye on the daily travelers too so because this is spreading so fast that is tomato flu yes and even then the flu has reached aryavanku anchal and as well as that is the districts in kerala so here you need to focus not only in kerala maybe as they have mentioned like the outbreak called tomato flu will be going to affect even the south india so just everyone be careful because as you people that once in a that means in particular region so if the virus or the flu has been spread then it can spread and affect many more people in a short period of time as you people already have uh, witnessed that regarding covid pandemic right how the virus has been many of the family members also lost their lives right so just be careful and here is a new virus which is recently detected in the kollam city of kerala and also that virus name is tomato flu why the name has been considered because here tomato flu which actually were in the tomato blushes okay in that particular shape so the name has been given as tomato flu and also the symptoms you have to consider like fever rashes and skin irritation and even some of the children also faced dehydration too so these were the symptoms of tomato flu because why i am actually focusing on the symptoms you can consider your example question regarding your examination right tomato flu will not consist of the one of the following symptom so if you have perf- no a clear idea and perfect knowledge about the symptoms then you can eliminate all the symptoms okay then whatever it is not a symptom you can that means the remaining option you can choose as your answer so that is my main motto because even the previous year question paper see, once if you can refer majorly the questions based on the symptoms will be in an indirect format so that is the main objective whenever you will be come to some of the disease or else like virus you have to go through the causes and the symptoms yes 
I think you were clear with the concept called tomato flu in the state of Kerala. And then, before moving to the next concept, let me check how many of you were attending the sessions. Yes, good afternoon. For Pol Shiva Yadav, for police constable exam, from on which month we have to read the current affairs? Okay. Yes, Shiva Yadav, actually, if you were preparing for constable examination, you have to prepare from that is June 2021 current affairs, okay, from June 2021 to June 2022. This is the first initial stage you have to do, okay. If the short, that means if the time period for your examination is very less, then at least be perfect with November 2021 current affairs to June 2022. Are you clear? November, December, January, February, March, April, May and June 2022. At least 8 months of current affairs is minimum. Even, okay, this is a second stage. And then even if you were unable to complete 8 months, at least be perfect with the January. January 2022 to June 2022. 6 months current affairs is minimum. Okay, na? And the medium will be like, that means, the, the that is, you can, the lower range is that from January. If the time permits, just to go through even from November. Then if more time permits for you people, then it is well and good if you can cover with June 2021 to June 2022. One year current affairs is maximum, uh, uh, that is maximum enough and more than the limit. Yes, good afternoon everyone. Hello Suhan, after a long time I think Suhan. Yes, hi Ganesh. <coughs> Deepak, I think that uh, I have, you were now getting the notification, right Deepak? Before the intimation to join the live interactive session, right? Yes. And now let me go to the next concept under appointments. So here comes to Rajiv Kumar appointed as an next chief election commissioner. So just to make a point here based on the chief election commissioner. The next chief election commissioner recently has been appointed and the person name is Rajiv Kumar. So now if we can move to the about the person, he will be going to assume the charge on May 15th. So tomorrow the person will be going to assume the charge as an next chief election commissioner. Who is that person? Rajiv Kumar. And here previously the person is Sushil Chandra. So he will be going to demit the office on May 14th. So today Sushil Chandra will be going to demit the office and notification issued by the law minister said. So this is under the ministry of law. And also, here you have to consider about the position called Chief Election Commissioner. So, regarding the position, if we can move here, this is in pursuance of Article 324 of Clause 2. So, here the Clause 2 of Article 324, which actually deals with, you can consider here, President appointed Sri Rajiv Kumar as the Chief Election Commissioner with effect from 15th of May 2022. So, here you need to consider is, uh, that is regarding Indian constitution which articles deals with which article deals with the concept called chief election commissioner so here your answer should be clause 2 of 324 are you getting my point here because you need to consider as I have informed in many number of sessions you have to be concentrated current affairs always interlinked with your general studies so here comes to the appointment it is in current affair but here the concept called chief election commissioner what are the articles etc so this particular concept you can relate it with what you can relate it with the concept and subject called Indian polity right so that is the interlink and the link between the general studies and current affairs so that is my main motto even including at the end of the session I'll be going through the concepts and the questions based on general studies too. Are you getting my point here? And then, next if you can consider, Kumar took charge as an election commissioner of the election commission of India on September 1st of 2020. In the last previous two years, already in the year 2020, he has been took the charge as election commissioner. But now you can consider here, the person is going to take charge as a chief election commissioner. 
and also move into the other experiences of the person even he actually asked a chairman as an public enterprise selection board that is PESB chairman in the year April that is 2020 of April. So these were the previous working areas of a person called Rajiv Kumar and now Rajiv Kumar tomorrow that means on May 15th he will be going to take and assume the charge as an next chief election commissioner and then as I have informed you many number of times you people need to cover static part and dynamic part parallelly. So here comes the static part of election commission of India. Actually this was formed in the year 1950 on 25th of January and moving to the headquarters which is at New Delhi. So this is a static part just to make a clear notes because the questions can be raised. When actually election commission of India has been established or formed. So your answer should be 25th of January 1950 and then election commission of India headquarters is it. Your answer should be New Delhi. I hope that you were getting the, my point right. So just to make a clear note even on the article 2 that is article 324 of clause 2, 324 clause 2 and as well as about the chief election commissioner name who is that person Rajiv Kumar and then before going to the next concept under economy let me check if you have any doubts I will be going through your comments. Yes, Yadagiri, January to May, 6 months current affairs revision, ma'am. Okay, Yadagiri, if it is possible, I'll be going through the current affairs revision too. Like multiple choice questions, one day, one fine class I'll be going to take. Yes, Shiva Yadav, is there available of current affairs in Chandan Logics channel from... Yes, Shiva Yadav, even from the year, you, you can concentrate here from as, as a well known like from May 2021 to till now all the current affairs were recorded and all are telecasted in YouTube channel of Chandan Logic Shiva Yadav, you can go through it. Next, yes Divya, ECI, Election Commission of India Kumar has taken any extra charge or only ECI. Presently actually the person tomorrow he will be going to take the charge as an Election Commissioner of India Divya and if you can consider here the previous working areas of Kumar were these were the areas okay as an Election Commissioner in the year 2020 on September 1st actually Kumar already took the charge that is Rajiv Kumar. Yes, good afternoon Pawan Kumar, Mahmud, next class. <coughs> And then moving to the next concept of economy. So here comes to all about retail inflation which has been recently surged to 7.79 percentage and in April highest in the past 8 years. That means you have to consider in the past 8 years that was actually the previous high was recorded as 8.3 percent in the year 2014. Now after 8 years that means in the year 2022 the retail inflation has been surged to 7.79 percentage. What is the percentage here? 7.79 percentage. In the year 2014 actually that percentage is which stands at 8.33 percent in the month of May. But in the previous month of April that is which is the year 2022 it has been surged to 7.79 percentage. You have to consider here focus on the numerical areas whenever we will be coming across economic or current affairs are you clear and ranks and reports indexes so from these areas majorly you need to focus on the numerical terms and here comes to all about India's total inflation which was surged to 7.79 percentage in the month of April and also here the reason is that by rising the fuel and as well as food prices what are the reasons here for this surge for 7.79 percentage the reasons were rising the fuel and food prices and which was the data shown by the government of India and even focusing on the consumer price based inflation which represents CPI inflation. So what is meant by CPI inflation? Consumer price index inflation. So which figure stayed well above the Reserve Bank of India's upper tolerance limit for the fourth consecutive month? Are you getting? And even then April's print was higher than March. So previously in the month of March the inflation rate is 6.95 percentage 
and moving to uh, the year ago it is actually just 4.23 percent but now the retail inflation was surges up to 7.79 percentage in the month of april you have to consider even from the past eight years that is 2014 it has been like mentioned it has in a highway and that percentage is of 8.33 percent it has been recorded now after eight years near 2022 retail inflation surges to 7.79 percentage are you clear and even then as i have discussed that consumer index right so consumer price index inflation that is cpi so here what does the cpi means cpi is the measure of average price by a consumer buys the household things that is the consumer price index in the name itself you can consider here that is the goods and things which were purchased and the that is by the consumer so that were the price based on that things so this is all about consumer price index so even based on this cpi index that is cpi inflation the record has been highest which has been from the past previous eight years just in 2014 it has been recorded that much higher now in, in the year 2022 it has been recorded to this particular percentage called 7.79 percentage previously in the month of april and then next concept if we move to the next concept under sports news so here comes to sports news is all about recently india has won 14 medals which is in the archery asia cup championship of 2022 so here let me discuss in detail about this achievement of india so recently under this archery asian cup of 2022 india has acquired and achieved 14 number of medals how many medals here 14 number of medals in that 14 how many gold how many silver and how many bronze actually indian players has been achieved regarding this asian archery championship which is of 2022 so here if we can move under this 14 medals eight were gold four were silver and two were bronze so this is the overall medal tally of india under this particular world that is the cup of asian cup of 2022 regarding archery so here let me discuss in detail about the particular asian cup tournaments where it actually took place because whenever we'll be coming across sports news you people go through what first area you have to focus is about the host place where and actually in which country this is actually the asian cup right so in which asian nation this is a world cup actually took place so here comes to the country called iraq and that is in sulia mania which is in iraq which actually took place about the archery asia cup of 2022 so under this campaign and the chair and, and the championship india has acquired the total number of medals were 14 medals are you clear in that eight were gold four silver and two bronze so this is one of the greatest achievement for india and even then as we can move to the men's team and women's team so here the indian team of women archers parnit kaur aditi swami and sakshi choudhury so these one actually india's first gold medal which is of the continental meet after defeating kazakhstan which is in the, in the country called iraq and you have to concentrate this is that means the women's team for the first time gold medal has been acquired and moving to the men's team that is pradamesh fuch and as well as rishabh yadav jawakar samadhan has won the second gold for india yes and then moving to the concept here this is all about and also parnit kaur won the third gold medal at the asia archery cup of 2022 just take your names of the list that that means the indian team of women and as well as indian team of men try to take at least the gold medal winner names are you getting and try to focus on the medal tally at this particular archery asia cup of 2022 which which were take took place already in iraq yes and then moving to the concept here how the format of questions will be from this particular concept the question from this particular concept is india has won how many medals in archery asia cup of 2022 so your answer should be how many number of medals 14 medals are you clear and the other questions like based on each and every category like gold medals how many gold medals how many silver medals and how many bronze medals so that is the main motto to give this the list of all the medal tally even regarding each and every category yes and then let us move to the next concept under awards and recognition so before going to the concept just go through i'll be going through your comments try to mention you all your doubts
Yes, Shiva Yadav, we need multiple choice questions based on the current affairs for the last year. Yes, Shiva Yadav, if it is possible, I'll be going and I'll be going to conduct two to three sessions based on the past six months or else maybe if it is possible, we'll be going to cover from the last year of June, okay? So, do, no issues about that. National and international current affairs, through one or two live sessions, I'll be going to take based on the multiple choice questions. And then, next move into the concept of awards and recognition. So, in awards and recognitions, you have to know about the person. Who has that person or any organization? So, you have to know who has won that. And the ne next area, second area is what? About the particular prize. So, what is that prize? And who will be conferring that prize? Okay. So, who will be awarded? So, these were the two areas you need to consider about awards and recognition concept. So, here comes the person name. If you can concentrate here, Indian architect Balakrishna Vital Das Doshi. So, here Balakrishna Vital Das Doshi, that is BV Doshi, honored with the Royal Gold Medal 2022. What is the medal here? Royal Gold Medal 2022. Who is that person here? The person is Indian architect Balakrishna Vital Das Doshi. Try to mention the name, try to take a notes on the person name. And as well as the medal, the person has been won. The medal here is won is the Royal Gold Medal of 2022. And then moving to the other concept is that about the medal. What is that medal here? Royal Gold Medal. Let me give a clear explanation about the medal. <coughs> Sorry. So here comes to one of the world's highest honor for architecture by the Royal Institute of British Architects, which is in London and United Kingdom. So, you need to consider Royal Gold Medal of 2022 has been acquired by the Indian architect and who is that person? B.V. Doshi. And then, what is this Royal Gold Medal? So, actually, this is given for the one of the world's highest honor for the architectures and as well as this is presented by Royal Institute of British Architects, which is in London, UK. And then moving to the other concept is here Royal Government is approved personally by the Queen Elizabeth II of UK and the award is given to a person not only for individuals but also for the teams okay that means if this is that means the Royal Gold Medal will be given for the individual and as well as for the group of people even who have a significant influence either directly or indirectly on the advancements of the architecture. So, who will be showing having an extra curricular and the perf that means extra performances, additional performances, exemptional performances and their work and contributions towards the development and advancement of architecture. So, for those royal gold medal will be given by the British that is by the Royal Institute of British Architects. Are you getting? And here you need to concentrate which is all above. Royal Gold Medal of 2022 has been achieved by the Indian architect. This is the world's highest honor for the architectures. Yes. And then the other area you have to concentrate is for whom? Only for individuals or for teams? No. Not only for individuals, not only for groups. But this is given for both. That means for the individuals and as well as for the group of people who have the perform performance which is based on the advancements of architecture. So, based on these areas, the persons and the group of people will be selected for the Royal Academy, that is a Royal Gold Medal of 2022 recently, Indian architect has been won. That is the main concept we have done in our current affairs session. Yes, I hope you are getting my points in detail, right? And then. Now it's a time for the practice questions. Everyone try to answer in the comment section. Now I'll be going to going through your comments. If you have any doubts, just feel free to mention your doubts in the comment section. And apart from this, if you have regarding Even about the practice questions too, you can go through the comment section and make a habit of answering the questions. Either it is wrong or right, but make a habit to answer the questions. The first question, already we have done in our previous sessions too, which edition of IBA Women's World Boxing Championship was kickstart in Istanbul, Turkey? Suhan, 12th, Jayaka, option A, Divya, 12, Rakesh, 12, Parthasaradi 12, Jayakar option B 12th, Naveen 12th, which edition 
of IBA Women's World Cup that is World Boxing Championship was kick started which is in Turkey as we have done with this particular session our previous session also. Yes, Naveen 12, Yadagiri option B, Suresh option B, Anusha 12, Sirisha 12, Mokshita 12. Try to utilize the sessions in a worthful manner. He, if you have any doubts or else any ideas or else any classes of revision, just you can mention the comment section. If it is possible for us, uh, for us, maximum will be going through your ideas and suggestions too. Path Saradi, next question. Yes, you have to wait Path Saradi because other people also have to mention, right? So, just we have to wait for them. Expecting few more answers. Shiva Nayak 12. Many of you are attending the live session but only few people are answering the questions. Where you people are lagging? No fear or don't be in dilemma whether to answer or not. Just make a habit to answer, okay? You are the students of Chandan Logics. How you people have to be? If you throw a bullet, it should be hit, right? And then, so here your answer is exactly perfect answer. Many of you have mentioned that is 12th edition. So, 2022 represents which edition? 12th edition. Option B is your answer. Deepak, I think yesterday you have attended for the session, right? Already we have done this particular concept in the session. Just while we are doing the descriptive concept, you have to listen perfectly. Because the next day I am going to raise the questions in the previous current affairs only. Past one week current affairs also, sometimes I will be going to include the questions. So, and before entering the session also, just to go through the notes. Okay? That is the main motto. While I am discussing the concepts, you have to take a notes, at least like running notes. So that you can answer the further questions and before entering the live session you can also concentrate and based on the questions too and you can answer immediately. So here next question is which of the following country become the first Asian country to join North Atlantic Treaty Organization Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. Okay Deepak no issues. I think you were new to the class right from the past the past class so just follow regularly you can come to know how to prepare current affairs because the sessions also always I'll be giving the guidelines how to prepare and how to follow yes Naveen option C Divya option D Suhan option D Deepak option D Sirisha option D Jayakar Gannavar <coughs> option D, Suhan, South Korea, Deepak, Rakesh option D, Yadagiri option D, Parthasaradi, South Korea, NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And those who have mentioned about the answer, just you people try to go through and a detailed information about NATO. Any one of you, you can mention comment section. Mani option D, Anusha option D, Mokshita option D, Shiva option C. Which of the following country has the first become the Asian country to join in the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence? Suresh option D. Yes, here your answer is option D. South Korea, recently it has joined, this is the first Asian country to join this NATO Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence. And then, move into the next concept under obituaries. That means, you need not neglect the obituaries concept. Even from obituaries, the questions can be raised. So, here, Pandit Sukram has been passed away recently. He was A or an. That means, maximum this will be based on the profession of a person from obituaries maximum number of questions you can expect is from all about profession of a person and the achievements of a person yes Parthasarathy not 
the Atlantic Treaty Organization, Deepak North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Yes, that is what I have raised the question. If you have any information regarding NATO, at least describe it in one to two lines, not regarding the full form. Because already I have explained about the full form, right? Many of you attend in the live session, but the few comments I am receiving, my students should be perfect in answering. Next, Suhan, Congress leader. Naveen, option A. Anusha, option A. Divya, option A. Rakesh, option A. Shiva, option A. Pandit Sukram has been recently passed away. He was A or an Union Minister, Businessman, Vice President of BCCI, Rajya Sabha member, Chayakar option A. Here your answer is Pandit Sukram is actually a Union Minister. This is your answer. What is that? The person was the Union Minister. Recently the person has been passed away at the age of 94. And then moving to the next question is, India's first EV charging station which was powered by biogas and was inaugurated in which of the following cities? Delhi, Mumbai, Surat or Chennai? Try to answer everyone here. Option A. Because you have to consider this is from the biogas. That means from hotels, restaurants, from the food wastage. Here, biogas has been prepared and this biogas actually will be using for what? This is to charge and power the EV station. Try to answer everyone. Option A, Rakesh, Suhan, Maharashtra, Deepak, Mumbai. Deepak, option B. Anusha option B, Naveen Mumbai, Shiva Nayak option B. Yes, here your answer is option B. Perfectly alright everyone, very good, made in the same consistency in answering. Suhan, Mumbai, Maharashtra, 1.5 lakh kilograms of wastage, yes, well and good. Well and good Deepak, you are following the answers, I think so, in perfect manner. And here next question is, which of the following article includes the provision of election commission? Kavya, option B. Article 324, Article 143, Article 243 or Article 233. Just now in a today's session, we have done about chief election commissioner, right? So Rajiv Kumar will be going to appoint and that means will be going to assume the charge of tomorrow, that is on May 15th. Option A, Shiva. Parthasaradi Mumbai, Suhan option A, Naveen article 324, Rakesh option A, Parthasaradi Mumbai, Jayakar option A, Suresh Delhi, Anusha option A, Yadgiri option A, Divya 324 article, Jayakar option A, Suresh 324 article, Sirisha option A, Yes, Divya. Deepak 324. Mokshita option A. Deepak option A. Yes, try to mention the clause. Kavya option A. Expect to generate 220 units of electricity. Yes, Pardasaradi. Perfectly all right. Which is regarding EV station, right? The answer. Well and good. Pardasaradi. Next, Mahi option A. Which of the following article includes the provision for election commissioner? Commission. Here your answer is article 324. And what is the clause? So here comes to article 324 clause 2 states that election commission shall consist of the chief election commissioner and such a number of other election commissioners. So this is your answer. Try to take a note based on the article and the clause. Suresh option A. Yes, well and good everyone, maintain the same in answering, not only current affairs, but whenever I will be giving some general questions also, you have to make an attempt, 
either it is wrong or right no issues in that i'm not going to like defend or something like i'll be not going to announce anything right just i'll be going through your answers and if it is wrong yes make it cut for the next time at least but when i am taking some of the test but in the upcoming sessions even i'll be going to take some of the test also so at that time you have to be perfect okay na that is the main motto always i'll be like informing try to answer if it is correct only at that point of time you people were answering but whether it is wrong also just make a habit whenever you'll be like the question is displaying you have to mention the options that's it so that i can interact with you people and next question is already we have done about gst goods and services tax in the previous session and this was an indirect tax also right we have discussed so here gst was introduced as the amendment act as which of the amendment act 100 101 102 or 103 try to answer this question everyone gst was introduced as which of the following amendment act prashant option a divya 100 navin option a shiva option a yadgiri option b vidya option a rakesh 100 sirisha option a gst was introduced as in which of the following amendment act Mokshita option A, Deepak option B, Deepak one not one, Yadgiri option B. GST goods and services tax is indirect tax and which was introduced under which of the following amendment act? Can I expect few more answers from you people or can I reveal the answer now? Yes. Yes, Alvin Mahi option D. So here your answer is actually option B. That is one not one amendment act. Just make it correct. Many of you have mentioned the wrong answer like one not three etc. Suhan, so, you have forgot. Okay, no issues in that. Just at least to make a quick revision now. I'll be going to give a clear idea about GST. Actually, goods and services tax was the one not first amendment act, and it came into force on. First July in the year two thousand seventeen. But if you can move to the historical background, this was first introduced in the Parliament by B. P. Chidambaram in the year two thousand five. This is actually the historical background, okay? But many of you will be focusing on two thousand seventeen. But there is a historical background that in the Parliament, the first that is GST was introduced by P. Chidambaram in two thousand five, and you can consider here. In 2017, it came into force. In which year? In 2017. But first introduced in the Parliament in the year 2005 by P. Chidambaram. And also here regarding the country called France. So here France is the first country to introduce goods and service tax. If you can consider what is the motto of GST? The motto of GST is one nation, one tax, and one market. This is the motto of goods and service tax. Even including as we have discussed about the that is GST also in the previous session, which is the indirect tax on manufacture, sale, and consumption of goods services throughout India. That is goods and services tax. At least try to take the notes here, everyone, about GST in our yesterday's and today's session with the discussion. I think that you people are perfect and clear, crystal clear with the concept called goods and services tax. Yes. And with this, we have done with the particular session of descriptive and as well as practice questions. If you have any doubts or else regarding any suggestions of our current affairs sessions also, you can mention the comment section. Once I'll be going to the comment section within two to five minutes. Just everyone, what are the doubt it may be, or your suggestions or ideas or any revisions of the subject. Just you can mention the comment section. I'll be going to discuss with you people. So here is the time for you people to respond to your regarding your doubts etc. So I'm here to respond for you. Are you getting my concepts every day clearly? Or is that a, that means if you people want any changes regarding current affairs sessions, just give your suggestions. Your suggestions were most welcome because Chandan Logics is always there to support you people. Whatever, how many number of ways it is, so we'll be always here to help you. 
Yes, it's our pleasure, Suhan. Yes, Deepak, which type of current affairs in SSC CHSL? Whatever we were discussing in the sessions that were focusing on your SSC examinations, bank examinations, central level other examinations to NTPC, etc. and the state level examinations too. So, here if you follow Chandan Logic's current affairs regularly, you can crack SSC, CHSL and you can score more marks regarding current affairs too. That is for sure, no doubt in that. Yes, Darshan, ma'am, have to remember Ramsar sites in a simple way. Okay, Darshan, in the next session, I'll be coming with, that means in one fine day, I'll plan about Ramsar sites and its tricks, okay? No issues in that. So, that's what I'm saying. If you have any doubts or any suggestions or if you want any concepts of revision, so I'm here to discuss with you people. At least in any session, at the end of the session, I'll be going through that. Yes, Mahi, regarding CHSL, right? Yes, Jayakar, what is your doubt? Just mention it clear. If you can mention the one word words, I can't read your mind, right? You people just mention your doubts in a clear way. Okay, we need current affairs regarding to CHSL, ma'am. Yes, Mahi, if you follow the classes, that's what I have informed just now, right? Just to follow the classes regularly. We were focusing on SSC, CHSL, CGL, and as well as bank examinations, even police constable examinations, SI examinations. So, state level to central level examination. Regarding and keeping this in mind, all the categories of people to help you people in the, regarding current affairs, we were designing our classes. So, regularly, if you can follow current affairs, these current affairs you can use for your any type of examination. Okay, this is the preparation for current affairs. Particularly, we'll be focusing on all the exam that is all the areas, and we were designing our sessions. Yes, Deepak, regarding Ramsar sites, I'll be going to the comments. <coughs> okay, Mahi, and then Jayakar have to prepare general studies. So, regarding general studies, suppose for history, what is the main important area? The important area is chronology is very important. That means first you have to go to ancient history, medieval history and modern history. So, in that particular way, follow one chronology. That means you have to follow one order to deal with all about the current of, okay, sorry, all about the general studies, particularly history. If it, if it is like polity, you have to go through each and every article, okay, and also if certain positions like the governor, chief minister, prime minister, etc., you have to go to the resignations and in detail you have to know what are the articles involved, what is the oath ceremony, what is the duration. So, whatever it is from general studies, you have to go through a concept based. So, conceptual basis of preparation is at most necessary for general studies concepts. Are you clear? Even if you can follow the sessions, Jayakar, you can come across all those general studies questions also. In the past, many classes I have covered history questions, general, that is regarding the his, the, and also including polity questions, economic questions, geography questions. That means parallelly with current affairs, I am including some of the questions just to make your quick revision. Are you clear? So, just make a pr clear procedure for the general studies too. Yes, Deepak, do a video on static GK. Yes, Deepak, if you want to listen to static GK concepts, not only one video is not enough for static GK. We can like explore through 15 to 16 videos of static GK. If you were interested or else if you are preparing any of your examination, you can go through our chat, that is our app called, mobile app called Chandan Logics mobile app. Just once install and by going to the play store, Chandan Logics app. So once open that app, okay, log in with your mobile number or email, then in that, whatever the course and or whatever the examination you are preparing for, just a search bar, just type that. Then you will be getting many number of courses. Then you can click on the particular course, just you can watch the demo videos and if you were interested, you can buy that. So, regarding static videos, already we have covered in the courses itself. If you were preparing, you can go through the courses. Already uh, we have made a complete sessions on the static part also. Yes, Rakesh, we need current affairs in Telugu for Telugu medium students. Yes, Rakesh, always we were here to support you. Already we were providing Telugu current affairs too in the channel called 
Chennan Logics Telugu YouTube channel. Once go through that channel, you can discuss and you can come interact with us in that particular sessions also. But join through the channel called Chennan Logics Telugu channel. Even the afternoon session also, I think that is after 2 p.m. We'll be having a live session in Telugu channel too. You can come across there. Okay. Yes, Suresh. Ma'am, is it useful for TSPSC? Yes, Suresh. These were useful, useful for TSPSC also because already you can consider like you once if you can watch Chendan Logics Telugu YouTube channel. There already we have uploaded Telangana Regional Current Affairs too and National and International. You can cover through Daily Current Affairs. So overall for TSPSC preparation, Current Affairs portion and the syllabus has been done. Okay, in the next months also that means in the April till March we have done on Regional Current Affairs. April and May also. in the upcoming months we'll be going to do yes darshan have to read general science in short duration please predict me to most important concepts yes darshan if it is possible even i'll be going to general science also yes deepak then if you have purchased i think there already we have provided right the static videos once you go through that yes rakesh it's our pleasure Okay, it's our pleasure, Pavan Kumar. <coughs> yes, these are your doubts, right? Okay, we have done with the session, I think so. But everyone, be safe and stay safe and stay home. Already in the session also, we have done with tomato flu, right? So be careful, everyone, and stay healthy. Thank you, everyone. We'll be meeting in our next session with some other concepts. Until that, stay tuned, stay safe, and stay home.